Hi everybody. Today we're going to be looking at our first lesson on parent functions and their graphs. So the first definition we have here is a parent function is the simplest function in a family of functions. All the equations in a family of functions resemble each other. And if you take a look at this graph I have over here, this is the family of quadratic functions. So they're all U-shaped, but some are moved left or right, some are flipped upside down, but you get the idea. This is an example of a family of functions. Right. We're also going to be using interval notation. And don't worry, we're going to keep repeating our use of this notation just to get you used to it, but today we're introducing it. So interval notation is a way of writing a subset of numbers. And, you know, I have some examples in the little box here. So an open circle or parentheses means not included. And a filled in circle or these brackets means included. All right, so we're going to be looking at a bunch of different parent functions. And for each parent function, just to get you familiar with them, we're going to graph them. All right, so it says enter the function into your calculator. We're going to create a table of values with at least five points, sketch the graph, identify the domain, which is all the x values, and the range, which is all the y values. The end behavior, and don't be intimidated by that terminology, that just means which um, number is the graph approaching. So we're usually we're looking at, um, you know, it approaching negative infinity or positive infinity. Um, sometimes it, the ends could be approaching zero or other numbers, but for our purposes, these would be the answers, okay? We're also going to be identifying the intercept. So just getting our feet wet, really, and so the first thing you want to do is open up your calculator, and we're going to go to the absolute func value function, and I'll open up mine so you can watch me do it. We're going to go to math, num, absolute value. We're going to press y equals. And we're going to go to math, num, and absolute value, and we're going to select x. And then you want to do zoom 6, because this will give you a standard window, and we'll be able to see the graph. Right? And we're going to want to pick data values off this graph, and we could do it sort of by looking at it, but just to be really sure we've got the right point, if you go to the table feature, which is the second graph that will bring you to table, and then we can just look right here and we can get the exact points off. All right, so I'm just going to pick, um, if you look at the graph, let me bring that up again. Let's look at the graph. I want some points to the left of the center and to the right of the center. So I'm just going to go with like negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4, just so I kind of get a general idea of what how the graph behaves. And that's usually a common question students have, like what numbers do you pick? Well, you, you know, you just kind of look at the graph and then decide from there. So I'm going to pick negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And then we'll go ahead and plot those and sketch the graph. Okay, now that we have our graph drawn, we can answer some questions about it. So what would the domain be? So what we're asking here is what values of x are included when we look on the x-axis left and right? Well, those arrows on the end, they go to infinity. So we're going to be including all possible x values. That means all real numbers. So we're going to be including everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then as far as the range goes, now we're going to be looking at the y-axis. What's included um, in terms of the y values vertically, going up and down? And it looks like we start right at zero and we go to positive infinity. So the range is going to be from zero, and notice it includes zero to infinity. 
Now, whenever you have interval notation and negative or positive infinity, you're always going to have the parentheses and not the brackets. All right, the end behavior is saying, which way is this graph pointing? So I'm gonna make a little note here. When we go, when X goes to the left, that's X approaching negative infinity, as opposed to X going to the right, something else right okay which way is the graph pointing so as we look to the left the graph is pointing up to positive infinity so the end behavior here is positive infinity and as we go to the right the graph is also pointing up so y is approaching positive infinity what are the intercepts? Well, this should be an easy one, all right? With the parent functions, the intercept is at, the x-intercept is at zero, zero, right there, right? And the y-intercept is also at zero, zero. Okay, so not too bad. And we're gonna do that with all the main parent functions that we're gonna be looking at for this course. All right, so let's go on to quadratic. We're gonna go back to our calculator. We're gonna go to y equals, clear x squared, all right? And we're gonna look at the graph so we know what we should be expecting. We're gonna to go to second graph to see the table. And we're gonna pick some reasonable values off of here that we can plot on our graph. And it looks like negative three um, through positive three would probably be good choices. Right, we have a nice sketch. Now we can, again, answer the questions. So what x values the domain includes all possible x values. So we're going to be including everything, right? We're not leaving anybody out here. All the x values will be included as um, we approach infinity on either end of the graph. So we've got all real numbers. And then we want to look at the range. The range is all possible y values. Now take a look. You notice that we start at zero and go to positive infinity, including zero. So we want to make sure that we know we're including zero and going to positive infinity. All right, what's happening as we go left on the ends and right on the ends? So as we approach, this way, right? Left, this graph is going to positive infinity. As we go this way, right, the graph is also approaching positive infinity. Now that's what happened last time, but don't get too excited. That doesn't happen every time. The x-intercept, right there, right? Also the y-intercept. Right, let's go to the next graph. We're going to do the square root. We're going to go to y equals, clear, and to get to the square root, you're going to go to second, x squared. And if you notice, the keys are being highlighted in red as we go to hopefully make this easier for you to follow. So we're going to be looking at the square root of x. Let's go to the graph. All right, now, if you notice, remember I said we want to really try to draw an accurate graph and we want to include, you know, left and right from the center. This really doesn't have a center. It starts at zero and goes to positive infinity. So we're going to pick some numbers that start at zero and go from there. And now that we have a very nice graph drawn, we can consider, again, our domain. What are the x values? And our range, what are the y values? Right, so as we look left and right, when we consider what the possible values are for the domain, it looks like the x values are starting and including zero and going to infinity. Okay. The y values start at zero and also go to infinity. Right, as we go left, how is the graph behaving? As we go right, how is the graph behaving? Oh, now this one's a little sneaky. 
Um, now keep in mind, the end behavior is talking about what number are we approaching? Well, as we go from X to negative infinity, we're not approaching any number. It's not like we're getting closer and closer to anything. We just land right on zero. So the end behavior here would be none. There is no end behavior, okay? There's no arrow at the end. Um, in terms of going right, that's obvious. We're going to positive infinity. We just keep getting bigger and bigger. Y keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you know, even though this graph looks like it's kind of leveling off, what's really happening over time is it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so it's going to be going to positive infinity. All right, the easy question of each graph, the x-intercept is zero, zero, right, right here. And the y-intercept is also zero, zero. All right, now uh, we're cooking. Let's go put in our next graph. So we want to look at y equals x cubed. We'll go to graph so we can get an idea of what we're looking at. Right? And we can take a look at our table of values. I mean, I'm going to pick um, negative 2 to 2 because if you notice, the y value for negative 3 is way off my graph, and I don't like that. So. Let us go back to our notes. I'm going to pick. Now, I don't want you to worry about what numbers to pick. I will always help you with that or nudge you in the right direction. You know, this really just takes a little bit of time and practice to get used to what numbers really feel right to do a good graph. Okay, we're looking at the domain. Let me highlight again our friend, the domain. Nobody likes to talk about domain and range. I don't know why. They're very nice. All right. So the domain is all the valid x values, and it looks like everybody's going to be included. All right. So we're going to have for the domain, it's all real numbers. And it looks like for the range, we're also including all the y values. So all real numbers. Okay, the end behavior. So as we go left, which way is the graph pointing? Right, the graph is pointing down. As we go right, the graph is pointing up. So as we go left, let me make a note here. The graph is pointing down, so we would say that y is approaching negative infinity. As we go to the right, the graph is pointing up, so we would say y is approaching positive infinity. And again, our favorite question for parent functions, the x and y intercepts are 0, 0. OK, we're doing good. Now, just when you were feeling really good, we're going to just take it up just a little bit, all right? So we're going to do the cube root next, and the cube root can be found at math number four. So we're going to go to y equals, hit clear. We're going to go to math number four, all right? That'll give us the cube root, and we'll hit graph. We want to see what that looks like. All right, all right, the domain all the value, all the valid values of x, the range, all the valid values of y. So if we look at this graph, it's easy to see that we're including all the x values, all real numbers, and the range, we're also including all real numbers. So again, just to point out, you know, even though this graph looks like it's sort of leveling off left and right, I mean, it's really, it's really sort of doing this over time, and it's including all the y values and all the x values, all right? Now, as we look at this graph, right, approaching from the left, right, heading towards negative infinity, you can see that eventually this graph is pointing down. This graph is pointing up. I mean, we just have kind of a narrow window here that we're looking at, but over time, 
when you look at this graph, we're going pointing down to the left and we're pointing up to the right. So for our end behavior, we would have negative infinity and positive infinity. All right, our friend, the x and y intercept, Nothing's changed, right? The x and y intercept is at zero, zero. We like that question. And we're moving on, all right. Exponential and logarithmic functions, we're gonna spend a whole unit doing that. I mean, that's just, I don't want you to worry too much about it. I just want to expose you a little bit to these functions. But for now, we're just gonna look at the graphs. We're not gonna to go too in depth. So we're gonna go back to our calculator clear, and we're going to put in 2 to the x. We look at the graph to kind of decide what values do we want. I'm going to go with negative 8 to 3 because if you look at the table of values, once we get to around 3, we go way, oops, we go way off. So after three, you know, for we have a coordinate 416, that's not going to work for us. So I'm going to stick from negative eight to three. This this number actually rounded to zero. So I instead of rounding to the hundredth, I rounded to the thousandth, you know, just so that I had a little a bit of a guide, because it is not zero. It's getting closer and closer to zero, but it's not going to be zero. So again, if we just go back to our table of values and we look at what ha is happening here. Your, your graph is getting closer and closer to zero, but it's never actually going to touch zero. Our domain, again, is going to be all the valid x values, everything going left to right. That would be all real numbers. And our range is going to be all possible y values. All right, so it looks like it kind of stops right around there. So the domain is all real numbers. That's easy. Now, the range um, does never, it never actually touches zero, all right? So we're going to use an open bracket here going to positive infinity. And that's a little bit different than we, what we did in some of the previous graphs. We included zero, but this graph does not include zero, all right? The end behavior of this graph as we go left, all right? Now, as we go left, what number are we getting closer and closer to? Let's go back and look at the table of values. So you can see at negative 3, we're at 0.12. Then we go to 0 0.06, 0 0.03. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As we go left, we're approaching the value of 0. So we're going to make a note here, 0. And as we go right, what value are we approaching here? It looks like we're approaching, we're pointing up, so we're approaching positive infinity. All right, now there is no x-intercept. We never touch the x-axis, so this is none. And the y-intercept in this case is 0, 1. So this line, just a little coming attraction, this line right here is what we call an asymptote. And we have an asymptote when we get closer and closer to a number, but we never touch it. All right, so we're going to learn more about that. In, a next, in another lesson, but I just want to just kind of get your feet wet with that. All right, on this page now, you haven't even learned logarithms yet, but we do want you to just take, or I want you to take a quick look at what the logarithmic graph looks like, right? The logarithmic graph is the inverse of the exponential graph, and you're probably thinking, I don't know what you're talking about, but let's go ahead and graph it and take a look at it. If it is the inverse of a graph, that means that this graph will reflect over the line y equals x as compared to the exponential graph in number six. Just, just a little background on that. All right, so we're going to go to our calculator. We're going to go to y equals. We're going to hit clear. And we're going to press the log button. And the log button is right next to the number seven. And we're just going to type in x and hit graph. Now, I did decide to give you the x values that I want you to use for this graph because it kind of looks like the graph just stops. Um, like, 
maybe around the value of 0.1 for x. It looks like it just stops, but it really doesn't. The graph continues to infinity and it's pointing down. So I gave you some values to look at. All right, so let's go to our table of values. And what you're gonna see here is we've got a lot of errors. And that means that it's never gonna hit zero. And it kind of looks like it stops at one zero, but it's not true. And if I give you a logarithmic graph on a quiz or a test, I'm going to tell you what X values to use. But if you look at my notes, I'm asking you what is the value when X is 0.2. So let's just quit out of here and we're gonna enter in log 0.2, all right? And we're gonna get negative 0.699 go back to our calculator. And there are other ways to do this. I'm trying to keep it simple. I don't want to overwhelm you. This is probably the easiest way to do this right now. We've got log of 0.8. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and plot all those points. And that's what that graph should look like, right? So just be really careful. This can be a tricky graph to do. The domain of this graph, again, we're always talking about what values are being included on the x-axis, right? We're getting really close to zero, but we never touch it. So the domain for this graph is going to be zero to infinity, not including zero. The range for this graph, all the possible y values. Looks like everybody's going to be included in that. So that's going to be all real numbers. Which way is the graph pointing as we go to the right, right? So this, this is a positive infinity. So which way is the graph pointing? pointing as we go to the right? It's pointing to positive infinity. This is asking you what is happening as X approaches zero from the right. What is happening as X approaches zero from the right? Like what is happening, right? We're getting closer and closer to what number, right? It looks like we are going to negative infinity. The y-intercept here, we don't have one, that's none. And the x-intercept here is happening at one zero. So if you look at this graph, once we plotted the points, you see that we have um, a situation where the graph never approaches the y-axis. It never it approaches it, but it never touches it. All right, so we get close to zero when we talk about the domain coming from the left and the right, but we never touch it. So we're including you know, everything on the left of zero and everything on the right of zero, right? And this little symbol right here means union. Now, like I said earlier in the lesson, we're gonna do a lot more with interval notation. Don't be afraid, okay? Nobody really is thrilled with interval notation at first, but we're gonna, you know, keep it really simple. We're gonna keep repeating it so that it gets comfortable. All right. And then the range is going to be what values are included um, when we go up and down, right? And it looks like, again, we are not including, right, zero. Everybody but zero gets included in the domain and range for this graph. The end behavior, what is happening as we approach the graph 
as we go left, what's happening? What number are we getting closer to? Well, we're getting closer and closer to zero. So this guy is zero. And what's happening to this graph when we go to the right? We're getting closer and closer again to zero. There is no x-intercept and there is no y-intercept. One more and we are done. You may want to pause right here and then come back and check when you're ready. All right, going back to domain, we want to decide what x values are included. Everything is included, if you notice, but zero. So we're going to have that same situation that we had in the graph previously where we're including everybody but zero. So the way we would write that again, negative infinity to zero, union zero to positive infinity. The range is really only including these y values and again, not including zero. So not including zero up to positive infinity. And if you look at the graph, I mean, there's no y values included below zero, right? The end behavior. So as we go to the left, what is happening to the graph? We're getting closer and closer to zero. As we go to the right, what's happening to the graph? We're getting closer and closer to zero. The x and y intercepts do not exist. All right, everybody. Um, that was, you know, a lot of graphing, but a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.